Hey everybody. Welcome back to the Art Corner. I bet you're sick of looking at that pig. Well, we're back today and we're going to do something kind of short and simple. And I hope you don't get tired of seeing it. I've seen it a few places in town since I thought about doing this, but if you're like me, you've got bird's nests somewhere in your house, either in a fern, in the corner somewhere, and they're supposed to be good luck. And I don't know if I believe that or not, but we're gonna do one today. So I hope that you'll follow along with me and maybe try one on your own, and I hope it brings you some good luck. I want it to look kind of contemporary, so I did a long, narrow canvas. I haven't sketched or anything, so we're gonna start from square one. And it's gonna look like you bought this canvas and a bird came and just built a nest right here in the corner. And that's how it's supposed to hang and how it's supposed to look. If it gets boring, I may add a little bird sticking its head up. We'll see how it goes. But this is just a plain gessoed canvas and I'm gonna start my background. And I think I'm gonna do just kind of a light blue background, make it kind of thick. I'm using a styrofoam plate, guys, just because I throw this away when I'm through. So I didn't want anything that would just be sitting out a long time. If you're a sophisticated artist, you need to use, you know, a palette or something that you can keep. Oil stays wet a long time, but as soon as I get through with this show, I'll throw these plates out. So make sure my paint's going to come out here. Uh, I've got a little white and another one. Thank goodness. Here it is. All right. This is going to be our background colors is old French ultramarine blue and white, and you know what? I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow and that'll turn some of it green. Y'all haven't tested my paint, here we go. Now, when you do oil also, you don't need much, just a little tit tat right here. I also use linseed oil, so it's a good smoothing agent. Pour a little bit of that on your plate. You don't wanna do mineral spirits on your styrofoam. I've got it in a little jar like this with a lid and you want to make sure that you discard rags and put that lid on when you're through. All right, let me go ahead and kind of sketch where the nest will go. I'm going to kind of, I haven't done one in a long time. So you guys are seeing it up close and personal first time. I'm just going to kind of, let's say these birds are a little bit messy too. Don't you like a good messy little bird's nest? And it's so interesting what they put in them. They're pretty cool. They can build a house in no time. Now, here it is in the corner. There's the opening. I'm really gonna ratch this up. Have some, some of it straying down in here and it's gonna kind of fall off the canvas. Real thick in here. And I do have a pallet knife. I may pallet knife some of those branches in. And I want to go ahead and maybe make those really. You want to get your attention to, hey, there's a bird's nest on that canvas. All right. Now, remember, too, in art corners in the past, always do your background first and pull your painting from the back to the front. That way you don't have to redo your detail. Let me get a good background brush and I'm going to start blending. Oh, let me get a paper towel out. Always have something you can dab off your extra with. Close by. All right, doing a little linseed oil first on my brush. Just barely dabbing into my blue. I'm gonna get a little yellow too. Really hitting that white hard, and here we go. I want it pretty thick. Blue backgrounds usually go with anybody's decor. Um, even if it's a brown house or a brown wall you're putting it on, the cool blue will complement that. I want to, the background's going to make this, so I really want it kind of thick, so I may palette knife it up a little bit too. See, when you touch that yellow next to that blue, see, turns green. And that's kind of what I wanted. Now, let's make it interesting. Let's see, here's my little scrawny palette knife. 
Here is another little scrawny palette knife. Let's do this one. And I'm gonna really throw the paint to it and see if we can't get some texture on here. Let's see. I can't use up all my white because I don't think I've got that much. Let me get the lid off this one. I want to pop up at me. This is thick, good. This will give us some texture right here. Didn't really mean for it to do that, but I think it's gonna work good. All right, I don't know. Let's see. I'm gonna add a little turpentine to it, thin it out. All right, I'm gonna dig it out, folks. Here we go. Yeah. And I'm gonna get that little wad of white that's really hateful and mean right now and stick it in the turpentine. Thin it down. Oops. Boy, I'm making a mess. Here we go. A little more. I just wanna see some texture. Now you can use other things to create texture with your paint. One thing you can use, and I may have talked about this last time, you can use Plaster Paris, which is something you can buy in art stores and you just sprinkle it over your paint like you would powdered sugar and it will thicken your paint up really quickly and add kind of a contemporary texture to your paint. Okay, I give up. We're just gonna try it like this. And I'll just make it thick with the brush. I don't mind a little glob here and there. I think it looks pretty cool. Especially if you're doing a contemporary painting. Now around the nest, I'm gonna go a little bit darker because this nest is gonna cast a shadow. Because it's leaned up against the wall there. Okay, a little darker. I'm gonna add, once again, a little yellow and get some green on there. Use my leftover paint and just cover those canvas holes. And I'll tell you, whenever you're doing a, a contemporary also, it's better to use a gallery wrap canvas, which is usually about this wide, and it goes all the way around. That way you don't have to frame it. You can just hang it on the nail. But when you do that, you need to go and get your sides covered like this. And free to board wine, I know you're out there. I just want to say hi. I hope you're watching your, watching my show. I hope you feel better. And I'm getting my sides here. Free to watch this show all the time. All right, see how globby and yucky, I love it. Now let me get some more white, some good, is this the good white? Nope, that's the bad white, here we go. Get some more good white. There we go. You don't need much oil for it to, to go a long way. Cover it all. The picture I'm looking really got a lot of texture. And I get a lot of my art reference, you all, from Either a magazine I've seen, which are really out of date, or um, I'll look on Pinterest, or I'll Google bird's nest. And it will show you if it's free clip art or not. You don't want to sell it if it's not, because you can get in trouble. But uh, if it's free clip art, go for it. And you can take your, get it on your phone if you have a smartphone. Take your smartphone to a Kiosks, I think is what they're called in Walgreens and CVS and some of those places and just develop it. I develop it an eight by 10 because I'm old as dirt and I can see it better. But I usually do an eight by 10 and that helps me be able to see it when I'm doing a commission for somebody or you can just see it a lot better. Um, 
And I'll tell you, if you Pinterest, you know, free clip art, you can find everything. And they've done all the work for you. They've gone out and taken the picture, etc. cetera. All right, now I'm gonna get a little more yellow. I just want you to be able to notice the background. That's a big part of this painting. And there's other things that I'd like to paint and sometimes I go blank and I don't know what to paint. I don't know how to get you to tell me, but you can Facebook me or something and let me know. Just freelance artist Lisa Sneed and tell me what you'd like me to paint and I'll see if I can't work that in. Somebody mentioned a swan. We may do a big black canvas and do a swan sometime. You can buy a black canvas now where you don't have to paint it. The whole thing is already prefab for you in black. You can also buy a burlap stretch canvas, which is real country and crafty, but that's something new they have. And something else I've really enjoyed that just came on the market is something called a watercolor canvas. And if you want a real slick, formal watercolor, uh, like say a pet portrait, but you want it to look like it's fine art, you don't want these holes in it. Get the watercolor canvas and it's slick as a ribbon and it goes on just like a, it's beautiful. I'm going to add just a little bit of brown right down here, just a little bit. Um, we need a little more shadow. Let's get some shadow around that bird's nest where we get it going. Once again, I'm still on the background. Watercolor canvas, that's what we were talking about. That's the newest on the market. Pretty cool. You can use it for oil. Doesn't have to be just watercolor. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. Now, I like that pretty good. I may add a little more weirdness up here. I don't want it boring. If you're gonna do something and spend the time to do it, you know, don't make it boring. Oop, I'll tell you what. Here we go. I just kind of want it to look contemporary. But since the background's got such a big part to do with this, I want it to look, you know, like, I want you to notice it. Okay. A little yellow brown. Don't panic. I'm going to try to get this smoothed out a little bit. I am making a mess on this table. All right, here we go. Have to use some goof off and get some of this off. Here we go. Yeah. I want it to look cruddy. This won't look like Hobby Lobby, that's for sure. This will be my own little creation here. I love a palette knife too. There we go. Take your frustrations out on your canvas. Now let's smooth some of this out. I don't have an apron on, which is kind of warm in here, but I do have it in my lap. And I recommend that for oils because they don't come out of your clothes. Once you get it on something, it's there. So if you're gonna do oil paint, please wear something that you don't care about getting paint on or use you an apron or... Okay, there we go, that's better. And that's another thing I like about oil, guys. When you do acrylic, sometimes if the back of it is not dry enough, you'll, you'll take it off. But when you do oil, you can just keep painting on top of it and adding to and blending even though it takes a little longer to dry, I just think it's so much more fun. 
Okay, now, I think that's pretty good for the background. If it starts drying and I wanna add some more, I will. But now I wanna kinda of get into the bird's nest itself. And once again, just like the painting, you wanna work from back to front. So I'm gonna get in the dark inside of that bird nest. And so I'm gonna get some black out here. And let's show some depth by getting the, I've got to find the right brush. Don't want it too big, don't want it too small. This one might work. I've lost a lot of my pencil drawing, so I'm kind of on my own here. But this is kind of the inside, and I want to be able to make it deep looking, but also we might do a little baby bird's head coming out of it, or just the top of an egg or two. So let's get this dark in there first. And the rest of the bird's nest, of course, is gonna be kind of light brown. So I'm mixing yellow. And I think that was umber we opened up, raw umber. Okay, gonna add a little more white. Squeeze it from the bottom here, make it. Two biggest tubes of paint you should have in your art studio a large white and a large black. You use them every time. Cleaning my brush. And I'm looking at a couple of references here on the table, but I'm gonna kind of make up my own. These are just references. But you wanna get the underneath part of this bird's nest first, and it's gonna be dark. Black, brown, yellow, and then we'll go on top and lighten up. I may even do a little, you know, when birds do a nest, Lord, they go out and get everything in it. You'll see hair bows and all kinds of stuff. Rubber bands. All right. Now remember, you've just bought this canvas, you brought it in, and a bird has come and built a nest in it. It would really have been better if I'd have gotten a canvas this big. That way you'd have so much more canvas and the little bird nest. Next time I will. My, my bad, I should have gotten a really tall canvas, but this one will be fine for demo. It's gonna get cool soon and we'll be doing Halloween and fall, can't wait. So stay tuned. All right, here's black. I can't wait, I love fall. Now I'm gonna get it real dark down here in the corner because of the shading, that kind of thing. There you go. Creates depth also. One thing too, as an artist, you want to remember to never be afraid. I think we talked about this last time. I'm probably repeating myself. I'm getting around the edge of this too because this nest is, you know, on the edge of this canvas and we want to look like it just built it there and we didn't intend for it to. So take it all the way around. Um, it's about our values. I didn't mean to get off track. You want to not be afraid of your lights and darks. That's the most important part. Okay, here we go. Real dark right in here. If you do a very vague dark and a very faded light, it looks like your chicken. Don't be afraid of color. All right. Now, I'm gonna put that one there and I'm gonna find, you know what I might do guys is get into the yellow. Let me squirt out some more yellow here. And I want to do a little bit of um, okra. This is my favorite color right now. I just love it. I think I'm going to paint a room this color. My husband will drop dead, but it'll be so pretty, this yellow okra. Get a little yellow, a little white. Blend them together with a palette knife and start putting some branches and twigs on this nest. 
And instead of using a brush, I'm just using a palette knife. And that gives it texture. Some depth. Now let's try this smaller one. Here's a little small palette knife with a sharper edge. And you can put your finger up at the edge of the palette knife and control it a little bit better like this. It just helps control it. It also mashes your paint down a little bit. But I think the palette knife is the ticket with this. I really do. Just to get your twigs and everything. All right, here we go. There we go. More white. Y'all cross your fingers I don't run out of white paint. I don't think I will. There we go. Now I'm using Master's Touch white paint. Um, one of the best artists in town, Ken Simile, he has a place in the gallery downtown. And he told me, he said, Lisa, in order to be a good artist, you have to invest in good material. And I found over the years that that's true. Uh, if you buy cheap material, your painting is gonna reflect that. So don't be afraid to spend the money on your, on your paint if you are a serious artist. It'll show if you don't. And that art, that Master's Touch, I think is what it's called, it's pretty good. Uh, it's not as good as, you know, some of your A top line paint, but it's, it works all right. Okay. Now. This is fun. Now, before I get into this part of the nest, I want to do my egg and maybe a little bird head because we'll have this the little limbs go up and over it. All right, here we go. We're getting kind of crazy. I want it thick though. Now I'm just scraping this on and pulling it off like cake icing. And I'm being a really light touch with this palette knife now, right back here. Not smashing it like I was before. It has a better look, I think. And just pretend like you're a little bird. How would you make your house? They have little twigglies, little branches, little things. Now I'm gonna start controlling it just a little bit more with a paintbrush, because it's getting kind of crazy. All right. Taking it around, it goes all the way around the edge. And that's kind of hard to do with a palette knife. And we want to get down into the inside of this just a little bit. Now, before we go any further, I want to do a little blue egg down inside this little nest. You're not going to see the whole thing. It wouldn't look realistic. We're just going to see part of it. And it'll have a really dark edge with a highlight on it. So let's get that dark edge on it first. Maybe even a little okra to show a little bit of highlight so that you can see it. Get that dark on there again. Round that up a little better. And then maybe part of another one. Lord, I'm starting to sound like Bob Ross. Here we go, just a little bit more. And I don't know what that is. Hang on. That's where I've touched that. There we go. Now, there's, and then we want to pop those eggs with the highlight so you can see them. Don't lose your blue. I may have to add some more. There we go. I don't know if you've ever done this, but you can pull down your ferns like at home to water and there'll be a bird's nest. 
maybe even baby birds looking up at you. There we go. Now I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and do a little baby bird. And if it messes up, I'll go over it with paint. But let's try it and see. I'm gonna got my pencil and I'm looking at it on, on my phone and I'm doing it the other way. But let's see if I can get this right. Let's see. I don't know. I'll just do it the way I see it. All right, here it is. It's looking this way. There's its little mouth. Its eyes are closed. I didn't even have its eyes open yet. Its little neck is skinny. It's got its mouth wide open because it's hungry. There's its little head. Now, I want to get into a little bit of the yellow. Let me find a little fine brush. Now, here's one disadvantage with oil. Since it is slow drying, sometimes you can blend and you don't, you know, it'll blend into each other. So I want to make sure I get a real good chunk of white so that bird shows up. All right, let's get it, the white and a little bit of yellow and let's start its little beak. I don't know if this is the right brush or not, we'll see. And I want to get a little red. Be careful with red, it takes over. No matter where you put it, it is the boss. Just remember that. Okay, let's get a little bit of red and the inside of his little mouth, and this will help him pop. Inside of his little mouth is red, it's brand new. And then his little neck is skinny. Find me a brush here. That one just seems to be a little bit lame. Here's one. Let's see if this one will work. Yeah, it should. I'm so bad with my brushes. I need to do better. Yeah, this one's holding the paint a little bit better. There's his little neck. He means business. And his eyes are closed and they're kind of a gray. We're gonna have to add some white so you can see. He'll be subtle, but he'll be there. And there's his eyes shut. His little neck's right down here. And I tell you what's cute. Hang on, I'll show you. It's so cute. Let me get some more white, pop his little mouth out just a little more so you can see it. There we go. Little gray head. We'll get in the black a little bit more and outline his beak just a little bit. It's a little neck. Put a little teeny weeny line right there for his eye. And then he's got little fuzzies. We may lose them when we do some of this nest, but I hope not. He's got little fuzzies right here coming off his head. Because it's brand new. Little baby bird. And this will help it rather than just being an old boring bird nest. Get into the red a little bit more, make him look real angry in his neck right here because he's screaming at his mama. Then let's get into the white again. Work on those fuzzies some more. There we go. And probably maybe a fan brush would be pretty to get those fuzzies on. Do I have one? I do. Let's see if we can do it with a fan brush. I'm going to dry brush some of those little fuzzies. Here's your fan brush. Just take it, 
Get on the edge, pay attention to what you're doing, and pull. Pull. I don't know. Let's see. Let me go back, clear that up a little bit. I get fan brush was too big. Oh yeah, I just want to see those fuzzies. That's gonna make him. Can you see him? And then we wanna, while that's white's on my brush, I'm gonna highlight these eggs a little more. Put some little black dots on them. Actually, they're probably blue dots. So they look realistic. A little bit on this one. And I'm gonna get a really, a little bit more black around his neck so you can see him a little better. There we go. We wanna see him really well. Now I'll get down here and stabilize my arm because I'm getting into some detail. There's his mouth open. You see him? Oh, I think he's cute. I hope you can see him. That oil, if you keep adding to it and adding to it, I'm afraid we might dwindle him away. Let me get his little eye on there again really good. There we go. There's his little head. Okay, now what you want to do on the nest is continue your your last strokes that are in front here. So let's get this brush here that's got good branch, uh, adds good branch detail. And I want one that goes way up. And the reason I said you need to wait is because we'll have to do a couple of branches in front like this. Just, there we go. You can see the bird, but he is behind branches, etc. Pull this dark around here. Now, I want to get this a little bit darker too. You see the inside of that nest a little better. Boy, it's a messy nest, isn't it? Now I'm gonna go kind of crazy up here and just so that it pulls your eye down. Cause they're pretty messy. And then you might wanna get a few things that they have built it with, like maybe a feather or something like that in here. I'm gonna get a bristle brush, get into my white again, and maybe just put a feather or two in here. Cause they, they build their nests with all kinds of junk. I mean, you might find a, who knows what, there we go. Now I'll put a center on some of these so it looks a little more feathery. Okay, let me get into my palette knife and sort of define a few more branches. Want it real dark down here. And then real light on top of that. Scoot that over. I 
I hope you can see him. I may pop some more blue on those eggs. They kind of went away a little bit. He's cute though. Boy, it's a messy nest, no doubt. Okay. Let me get a couple little lines inside those feathers. One there. All right, I'm going to go, I'm going to hit this blue just a little more so you can see it. There we go. All of his brothers and sisters haven't hatched yet. There we go. That helps a little bit. We were about to lose them. There we go. Okay. That is a messy nest. Let me get some of this cleaned up just a little bit. But you know, that's just how they do. And it is kind of contemporary, but I like it. I like contemporary stuff. I like palette knife and I like anything with texture. I think this would be easy for you to do at home. Let me squirt some more white out and I'll highlight around the top and we'll be done. I thought about doing a little robin in there, but you know what? I don't want to get it too crafty looking. I want it to have a kind of a contemporary feel. Here we go. Now we go. Let's get that white on there. Around the top. Yeah, I think a robin is just too common. And I am really throwing the paint to this. I'll have to go buy more white. I'm gonna call it done. I hope you guys like it. Sweet little bird nest, maybe in your fern at home with a little robin just squealing at us. Thank you for joining me today. I'm looking forward to next time and stay creative.